I've been a head teacher now for about nine years. And in my early days, I used to kill people with development plans. I created some huge ones. Um, and they worked to some extent, but they were wearing people out. And about three years ago, I was thinking this isn't working. And I'd been here a couple of years as head teacher. And I was having a beer with a mate called Steve, who runs the police pensions. We were talking about the austerity measures and things getting worse, and there being no money. Um, and, and, and the option that you have in those circumstances of doing one of two things, either nailing things down and sticking to your knitting, or doing something extraordinary and going out into, into new territory. So about three years ago, we decided to, to push on into something new. And, and Steve mentioned a thing called Blue Ocean Strategy, and also Tipping Point Leadership. And uh, you know, I'm like most teachers, I, I'm not really into business style um, kind of lingo or, or, or practices. But actually I think I learned a lot from pursuing those two things. Um, and I went out and found out about them, found out about uh, what they really meant. And uh, our development plan, our major development plan that we, set, we started three years ago and have committed ourselves to and haven't changed from, that's a key thing, not changed from in three years, is going really well and, our, and, and everything about the school has been transformed. And we did that through this thing called Blue Ocean Strategy and Tipping Point Leadership. And I'm just going to spend a few minutes telling you about what we did. The key thing, I think, for, for, for Blue Ocean Strategy is to absolutely make sure that you spend more time, more time, on implementation and think about how you implement things than you do on actually what you're going to do. I don't think school improvement is terrifically difficult. Stick to two or three, four things maximum and do them really well rather than doing a hundred things um, and never seeing anything through. And we came up with four things we wanted to do in order to transform the structures so that we could concentrate on one, great learning and teaching, two, developing students' literacy and numeracy skills, three, making the curriculum really exciting in real life, and four, uh, supporting students, uh, every individual student in a school of 1,500. And on the Blue Ocean Strategy, there are four hurdles you have to overcome. And the first hurdle is the cognitive hurdle. Uh, and to say that in, in plainer speak, it's making sure you understand what you're doing and why you're doing it. So what we did, we spent a long time articulating to ourselves why we were doing them, the arguments for doing them. And then we did, then the really important thing we did was set up a whole series of what we call why panels um, of parents, of teachers, of, of students and of governors. So they're small panels um, of about five or six people and their role is to ask us why. Why are we doing this? Why are we doing that? Why are we doing the other? And if we can't answer and convince them about why we're doing something, then we reject it and we don't do it. The second hurdle you have to overcome is the resource hurdle. So we, we looked at everything we did, measured the impact of it as best we could, and anything that wasn't, happen, that wasn't having an impact, positive impact on student learning and student outcomes, we rejected. And what we did then was actually pool our resources on things that really mattered. We looked at all the things we spent money on that didn't matter, that, wasn't having, that weren't having an impact, and focused all our money on, on, the, on the things that were having an impact. The third hurdle to overcome is the motivational hurdle. And one of the, reasons, one of the things you have to do here is paint again and again a picture of what the world would be like once you make these changes and promote that endlessly. And one of the things you have to do, and this is real tipping point leadership stuff, is not focus on the mass of people, but focus on convincing the people who are on the edges, the people who will actually be hard to convince and work with them and focus with them on the benefits of what you're doing and make sure that they feel valued and listened to. And lastly, 
Uh, and, and trickily, there's the political hurdle. And that's identifying who politically will oppose what you want to do. And one of the key things we did, which worked really well, um, was invite those people we identified who would be the political obstacles to what we're doing and invite them onto Y panels. And that had two really positive um, elements to it. Firstly, they felt valued and privileged. And secondly, we actually learned a lot because they asked us really good questions. And it's really important um, when you're developing schools, developing anything, is that you listen to the naysayers. You listen to the people who actually um, aren't going to say and roll over and say, yeah, I agree with everything you're doing. But listen to the naysayers. So it's four things. That's the cognitive hurdle, understanding why you're doing it and having why panels. There's a resource hurdle, focusing everything you've got on the small number of things you think are going to make a real difference. There's a motivational hurdle, that's talking to the people who are going to be hard to motivate and get them to move uh, and, and win them over with the vision of where you're going to go. And lastly, it's the political hurdle, um, focusing on those people who are going to oppose you most um, and target those and make sure that they feel on the inside and feel part of the consultation process listening to the naysayers. Now, three years on from when we implemented our plan, did a huge amount of work. Um, the place is a much better place than it was. And there's lots of different measures that you can look and look to to, 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 to kind of evidence that change and that progress that we've made. What's interesting now, three years on, having finished and evaluated, we're just finishing the evaluation of a three-year plan. What's interesting now is where we go next. And um, to use another, another kind of business terminology is to look at the sigmoid curve. Where are we on the sigmoid curve? Are we going to go over the top of the sigmoid curve? And if you don't know about the sigmoid curve, um, perhaps that's another uh, teach me session I can do in the future. I hope that's okay, Dan. I hope everything Works out well at Teach, teach Meet Brum. Thanks so much. Cheers. Bye.